Hi, I'm Gina. Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to build your first semantic search workflow in AIP Logic. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We train thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. By the end of this exercise, you will have built the following AIP logic function. This function takes in a course topic, so something that a pilot-to-be wants to learn about. In this case, maybe I want to learn about aeronautical decision-making. When we hit preview run, and the function runs, what you'll get back is a curated, essentially, study guide based on our data. What this is doing is it's taking in the course topic that somebody wants a study guide on. It's finding the relevant pieces of the FAA, or Federal Aviation Administration Handbook. It's a 500-page handbook, so naturally you don't want all of the handbook. So it's finding only the relevant parts of the handbook relevant to the course topic that the user wants to learn about. It prints out that object set as a string, feeds the string into an LLM, and this is our result. We get a nice curated study guide based on real data without actually just having to read through all of the original data. Now that we've seen what we're going to build, let's go do it. This video does have a prerequisite. Before you watch this one, you should go ahead and watch the preparing PDFs for RAG workflows video, which is available on this channel. To verify that you have all the resources that you're going to need to complete this exercise, let's head over to Ontology Manager. Starting from Foundry, hit Control J. Search for Ontology Manager. Click on Ontology Manager. Here we are in Ontology Manager. The object type that you're going to need is called something like FAA Chunk. If you click on FAA Chunk and look at Properties, you should see that you have a property called extracted text and another property called embedding. You will need both of these properties to participate in this exercise. You don't have to use this exact object type. You can use any sort of object type that has a plain text property, something like extracted text, and an embedded vector property. So if you haven't completed that video yet or don't have some sort of chunk object type handy, make sure you go ahead and watch that video, build those assets, and then you can participate with this exercise hands-on. Let's head over to AIP Logic. Hit Control J and search for AIP Logic. Click on AIP Logic, hit New Logic, and call this one, prefix it with your name, Gina, FAA Study Guide Generator. Hit Browse. Go ahead and locate your project and hit Save. Here we are in our empty AIP logic function. The goal of our exercise today is to build an AIP logic function that takes in a topic and spits out essentially a study guide. The object type that we're going to be working with, FAA chunk, represents pieces of the FAA manual for training new pilots. The manual is hundreds of pages. It's about 500 pages long. And so if you want to learn about a specific topic, you probably don't want to read the whole manual, which is why we're going to be creating this function so that it takes in a topic and then returns a study guide that's more focused, perhaps maybe a page or two or even shorter, for a specific topic that a pilot-to-be wants to know about. AIP logic takes inputs, transforms them, and produces outputs. The function input in this case is going to be whatever topic somebody wants to make their study guide about. Start by hitting add function inputs. The input is going to be called course topic. And that's our input. Don't worry about this little triangle here. That's just because we're not using this input yet. It will go away very shortly. Up next, we're going to do things a little out of order. First, click on the use LLM block. Let's talk about the role of the use LLM block in the context of our workflow. First of all, if you haven't seen the use LLM block, let's take a little tour. First, we have the system prompt. That's like the job description. 
We have the task prompt, which is the input data. Here we can configure the model. Up next, we have tools, apply actions, the calculator, calling a function, the current date, and querying objects. In order to understand the role of the use LLM block within the broader AIP logic function, we have to understand how can we actually get our data into the use LLM block so we can use our data to generate its response. After all, if my goal here is to generate a study guide of sorts for a specific flight training topic, I want it to use our real data, which in this case is the FAA chunk object type. There are two ways to ground your LLM in reality by allowing it to generate responses based on your data. One way is by giving it a tool and allowing it to query objects. The query objects tool allows the LLM to write queries against the ontology backend. That can work really well for a lot of different use cases. However, it only really works if the user's question can be fairly easily distilled into a query. So in cases where the user prompt can be pretty easily distilled into a query, this works quite well. So queries can do things like filtering and aggregations and sorting. When we're dealing with lots of text, the way that a query is going to work is it's going to be doing a keyword search or searching for a key phrase. And that can get us pretty far. However, when we're dealing with a text corpus, the better thing to do is to use a semantic search. A semantic search is going to find us the n closest vectors in high dimensional space to the search string. And therefore, it's going to be much more appropriate for when our prompts are really questions of meaning. Let's go have a look at it. We'll keep the LLM block here. We're going to come back and use it. But for now, you're going to hover above it, hit add a block, and we're going to add the semantic search block. Click on a semantic search and call this block find relevant chunks. We're going to invoke a new object set. So click on select a variable, hover over create a new object set. And the object type that we're going to be using, so mine is called Gina FAA chunk. Click on FAA chunk. The property to search, this is where that embedding property comes in. As a little reminder, an embedding generally is a vector representation of text that captures its meaning. The property to search, there's actually only one option, which is the embedding property. For the number of return objects, you can enter some number, could be 10, 5, or 10. This is always something you can tune. For the query, we are finding the 10 or n most similar embeddings in high dimensional space to what? It's going to be to the user query, or in this case, the course topic. So we want to find the 10 most similar chunks from the FAA chunk object set that are most similar to the course topic that the user wants to learn about. The query here is therefore going to be course topic. You'll see that this is unused, but don't worry, we'll put it into use pretty quickly. Let's configure the LLM. We're going to take the results of our semantic search and feed it into the LLM. The system prompt is going to say something like, you are a assistant flight instructor. Your job is to generate study guides for prospective pilots on the chorus topic of their choice. Given the relevant chunks, summarize and format the information into a nice looking study guide. For the task prompt for the input data, we have to provide the topic so we're going to say topic forward slash course topic. And on the next line, remember the reason why we did the semantic search is because we want the LLM to produce a response grounded in our data. To do that, we actually have to feed these responses in to the LLM block. 
So here we're going to say relevant chunks. Note that in the system prompt, we said given the relevant chunks. And then the task prompt, we're saying here are the relevant chunks. It's going to be a forward slash. You'll see two options here, find relevant chunks and course topic. Click on find relevant chunks. That's the result of the semantic search. And this is an object set. We're not going to feed an entire object set into the prompt. Instead, we're going to take a property or a couple properties on the object set and feed those into the prompt. The property that we're going to grab from the object set is going to be extracted text. Hit add one property. We got a new block between the use LLM block and the find relevant chunks block. What is that doing? The role of this block is to take an object set and print it out as a string. After all, large language models expect text. An object set is not text. So we take the object set, print it out as text, and then feed that result, find relevant chunks formatted, into the large language model. Let's take it for a spin. As an example of a course topic that you could try out, we could say something like, I want to learn about aeronautical decision making. Hit preview run. Everything is running here. And this is our study guide. And it's focused on aeronautical decision making. There's a summary, some key bullets, some definitions. And looking at the execution of our function, we see the semantic search go and returns 10 resulting chunks. Prints it out as a string. We can see them printed out results and see that they're, they seem pretty useful. We might want to up the number of chunks a little bit. This is not that much text, so we can always bump the number of results up to maybe 15 or 20. But keep in mind that if you bump this number here up to 20, this block, which prints an object set, is currently truncating to 10. If you don't want that, you're going to have to bump that up to 20 as well. And that's our function. In summary, this function takes in a string, and returns a much larger string that is essentially a study guide for the topic of the user's choice. We're almost done here. You're going to hit save and publish. Bind it to an ontology, so it's select ontology. For us, it's ontology, it's public ontology. And hit publish. In our next video, we're going to be walking you through how to use this function to generate a notepad document. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what other sort of AIP content you want to see next in the comments. Thank <laughs> you.